Have you ever installed an app or an audio plugin on your Mac that you end up not liking? Or maybe you installed a demo that keeps bugging you to activate it. Worse yet is when you think you've deleted the offender, yet it still causes problems. There are two apps that can really help you with this. And I want to clarify before I waste anybody's time that these apps are Mac only. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get started with the first app. I picked up this app a few years ago when they first released it. They initially offered it as a free plugin, but they now charge $9 for it. I have no problems paying $9 for it today. It's a simple app, but one that it does something that nothing else does. And that's just, it makes it easy to remove audio plugins from your system. And you may be asking yourself, why would you need to do this when it's easy enough to find your plugin folder and drag them to the trash manually? Well, let's turn to the website to find out. They call this the missing plugin uninstaller for Mac. Unplug and play. If you make music on a Mac, there's no reason not to have this. Plugins throw files all over your computer, and each developer has a different philosophy about where their files should go. Enter Audio Plugin Uninstaller, the easiest way to uninstall plugins on a Mac. Plugin Paralysis? Too many options can slow you down. Boost productivity by keeping only your best tools. Try more demos by knowing you can easily remove them without cluttering your hard drive. Remove troublesome plugins. Is a plugin crashing your session or not showing up at all? Clean it up with one click. Two modes. Uninstallers mode? Try this mode first. It will remove all files originally installed by the plugin. Uninstallers mode works by reading the original installation receipts and reversing the process, while making sure not to uninstall files used by other plugins. If a plugin doesn't appear, then it doesn't have a normal receipt, but you can still remove it using All Plugins mode. All Plugins mode can delete any plugin, which is ideal when there is no install receipt. Filter by plugin format. See only one format, e.g. audio units or AAX, allowing you to remove entire formats you no longer use. Reveal in Finder. Right-click a plugin to view it in Finder in case you want to manually quarantine it for troubleshooting. You can also explore installation packages to find the presets, preferences, and other hidden files for any plugin. Specifications. Works with all formats, VST3, VST2, audio units, AAX, CLAP, and RTAS. It works on Mac OS 10.14 Mojave and higher. In this example, you can see that Scalar 2 installed nearly 900 megabytes of files, half of which are not in the plugin folders. And I'm just using this as an example to show just how many files and how large the files can take up the plugins install. Using the app is simple enough. You can search for specific plugins or browse from a list. Here I am in the uninstallers mode, and I can see that the Rode Unify driver is still installed. I'm not using the app, so I want to remove it. But first, I want to view package contents. The items listed in red have already been removed, and I used the other app I'll be talking about in a minute to remove the Road Unify app itself. But the app remover only removes the standalone app. It doesn't remove the plugin files. That's why we need both of the apps that I'm talking about in this video. Now I'll click on the uninstall package button and we get taken to the next screen, which shows us which files will be removed, which files will not be removed because they're in use by or used by other packages, and any files that have already been removed. Now we click Uninstall Package again, 
and it will give you a pop-up asking if you're sure you want to do this. And then you click the proceed button and it does its thing. When it finishes, it shows you what was removed. In case you're wondering, you can uninstall multiples at once. Here's a plugin I demoed a while back but never removed. We can see that there is a component, VST3 and VST version install. Just command click additional packages and proceed as normal. If we move over to the All Plugins tab, we have the option to filter by format, which makes it easy to remove plugin formats you don't need in bulk. I don't use AAX or RTAS, so let's go through and remove all of those. I start by selecting AAX from the drop down menu, and I remove them like I have earlier in this video. It appears that there's something about Supertones plugins that prevent me from deleting specific plugin formats, but you can see that everything else was removed. Now that we've talked about removing plugins, let's look at how to remove apps. This is another app I've been using for years. Let's take a look at the website to learn a little more about App Cleaner. App Cleaner is a small application which allows you to thoroughly uninstall unwanted apps. Installing an application distributes many files throughout your system, using space of your hard drive unnecessarily. App Cleaner finds all these small files and safely deletes them. Simply drop an application onto the App Cleaner window. It will find the related files and you can delete them by clicking the delete button. It's really that simple. Here, I'll delete the program caster from my system. Using these two apps have allowed me to reclaim a significant amount of drive space and clean up some of the clutter I've had in my plugin folders. One of the other reasons I use both of these apps is that one doesn't always get everything, especially when we're talking about those products that have standalone app and plugins both. And I talked about that at the beginning of the video, but App Cleaner, it doesn't hit the plugins, and the plugin uninstaller doesn't hit the standalone apps. Before going on and wiping everything out, take a minute to think about backward compatibility, especially with plugins. You might run into some issues opening up older sessions if one or more of the plugins you used are no longer available on your system. It's usually not the end of the world, but you'll have to replace that plugin and set it up again. But if that plugin is an instrument, that will be a whole other thing. I've tried opening some of our legacy projects, but since Motu killed off MX4 years ago as a third-party instrument, some of those older songs can't be opened and remixed without recreating the parts that used MX4. So what about you? How have you been removing apps and plugins? Do you have any tools that you recommend? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.